Hello there and welcome to JJ Painting, I am JJ and today we're doing, as you know, a faction focus for the Chaos Grand Alliance. Yes! Now, obviously when we talk about Chaos, we do kind of have to talk a little bit about the 40k side of things as well, just because there are similarities, but the differences are also there and that's what we've got to talk about very quickly, just to clear everyone up so we're all on the same page. And obviously this is how we'll be continuing the uh, Age of Sig March journey. We are Age of Sig Marching, if you will, eh? Uh, sorry, it's not it's not my best. Um, but in any case, uh, so we're painting another Chaos Knight today. Carrying on with those. Thank you all very much for joining me. So, without further ado, let's crack on. It's difficult to talk about Chaos in one system without bringing it up in the other one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say everything we need to say about the 40k stuff first and how it relates to Age of Sigmar, and then we're going to talk purely about the Age of Sigmar side of things. So the first thing is obviously the names of the gods are still very much the same, Korn, Nurgle, Zinch and Slanesh. They're the same in 40k as they are in fantasy, and most of the aspects that come with them in terms of what they're known for are exactly the same. So Nurgle, god of diseases, so lots of units that are very bulky, have disease ridden and high levels of resilience and toughness and lots of mortal wounds going out. Corn units largely being the ironclad gladiators who are known for being close combat orientated and have an aversion to magic. Slanesh being the army of swift moving units with lots of attacks and a fairly powerful magic system. And Zinch being the arcane sorcerers with mostly magic and sorcerers related units backed up with a larger number of demon related units than the other three in many respects. But the thing is that that's where the similarities really do end and those are the only areas where they are the same. Obviously 40k has demon engines and most of its chaos factions are very much relegated to being renegades from the Imperium. Whereas in Age of Sigmar, chaos is its own thing. The tribes of the old world and even of the Age of Sigmar realm gates, they were raised with the, with the Pantheon being a big part of their lives. They are more truly aligned with chaos than anything in 40k. So what this leads us to quite interestingly is a very different culture within Age of Sigmar and the way they look at Chaos as well. And the other thing to remember is that strictly speaking in Age of Sigmar, Chaos won. Chaos won the big final battle that destroyed the old world and they very nearly won in the new one as well had it not been for the Stormcast Eternals. But that and in 40k not quite the same. So we've seen a different level of progression between the two of them and ultimately most of the Chaos perspective in 40k has largely come from Space Marines and that's another thing to bear in mind. But anyway that's enough for talking about 40k. Let's faction focus on Age of Sigmar's Chaos. Cut. The thing about Chaos in Age of Sigmar is it's actually a much broader faction than people realise. The main reason for this is because, thankfully, there are now the four specific god armies. So you have armies and army books and battle tomes and units and special rules related to each of the four chaos gods. You also have a dedicated undivided army and then two other armies that are kind of offshoots from chaos but are definitely heavily influenced, which are the beastmen or beasts of chaos as they are now and the Skaven. Now, the interesting thing about both of those two, which we'll cover in a little bit, is that they do integrate back into the main Warriors of Chaos, for want of a better word, sub-factions, sub but they each come with their own special things and their own unique ways of playing. The first thing we need to say about this is that, leaving demons aside for one moment, the God-specific armies are a genuinely fantastic place to start if you already know how you want to play. So when we're talking about how we start a Chaos Army, I'd always say start with either Slaves to Darkness or start with Beastmen. And the reason I go with those two is Slaves to Darkness gives you a very solid, well-rounded, heavy infantry-based combat army. Beasts of Chaos gives you a slightly broader range where you also have heavy infantry, but you also have skirmishers, you have ranged units, you have monsters, and you have slightly more monsters and slightly more esoteric units than you do with Slaves to Darkness. Now, once you've got a pretty good idea of how those armies work, you can then integrate the Slaves to Darkness models into God-specific armies if you want, whereas with Beasts of Chaos tend to stick more rigidly to their own thing. However, that doesn't stop them being great allies if you want to then tee into the God-specific armies a bit further down the line. Now, if we then start moving away from narrative and starting points, if we then want to start moving into a more competitive mindset for Age of Sigmar, one of the good things to look at at this point is then back at the Skaven. Now, Skaven is an army, in my opinion, which is most res best reserved for more advanced players or players who have a really good understanding of both the games and the game's mechanics. 
Firstly, because a lot of their units do rely on special rules and very esoteric ways of playing that don't immediately become obvious if you're a new player. But for those of you who are experienced, it's much more easy to understand how the army works if you've got a bit of background. Now, Skaven has probably the highest number of artillery pieces in the entire Chaos range. It has a larger degree of ranged weapons and it has more special rules that are designed to buff and enhance their units and are more required on those than they are for other armies. There's a lot of mortal wounds going out in Skaven armies as well which you don't see outside of Nurgle armies and obviously they have spells and wizards as well so they really do make the most of just about every single facet of the game. The only thing they don't have interesting enough is any flying units and they are the only army in the Chaos faction that doesn't have any flying units so if you want flyers you're going to have to to go probably either to Zinch or Slanesh for those, possibly even Nurgle because they've got flying uh, giant flies which is quite useful. <laughs> but straight away this should be giving you an idea as to how much broader the Age of Sigmar Chaos faction is. And the other thing you need to remember is that when we come to talking about the Grand Alliance of Chaos is their Grand Alliance works in an ever so slightly different manner to the other ones and that is to do with the gods themselves. So I was talking earlier on about the god specific armies and the thing to remember about those is that they aren't limited to just the books they've got. So whilst there is the battle tomes for the Blades of Corn, the Heat Knights of Slanesh, the Machikin of Nurgle, etc., every single unit in the Slaves of Darkness book can be aligned to one of the gods. So you can have Chaos Chariots and Chaos Knights of Nurgle, you can have Marauders dedicated to Zinch, you can have Warriors dedicated to Corn, and that's pretty much universal for all the characters, for all the core units. There are some units that already have gods, gods they're aligned to, but most of them don't. So they're a very good core book if you want to then start branching into other things as well. Now this brings back to what I was saying about the Slave Start as being a very good core and a good start point for your army, is that when you have that, you can then move them around the gods and because they aren't god specific in aesthetic, it means that if you want to paint them in a relatively neutral colors, you can then move them between the armies and between the different gods to get a sense of what all the benefits are between Hedonites, Magakin, Disciples of Zinch and Blades of Corn. But then again, this also means that you can take things like the Skaven Plague Monks and their Plague Claw as well, which is one of their artillery pieces in a Nurgle army, which is really interesting for Nurgle players, meaning that they can take three out of the seven books in their army. And incidentally enough, three and seven being the numbers of Nurgle coincidence? I think not. <laughs> anyway, moving along. But when we think of that in perspective, it means that as a Grand Alliance, it means that the armies and the, the, the combinations in the armies that you can build up are far more versatile and far broader than being reliant on your allies, for example. And if we get onto that very quickly, the allies system itself is very useful across all of the Grand Alliances anyway, but it's more prevalent here where you can have your core army being Nurgle, for example, if we stick with that for a second, have units from the Slaves of Darkness, Magakin and Skaven Battle Tomes, as just your core army, and then on top of that you can have units from the, from the Hedon Knights of Slanesh, the Beastmen, or even the Blades of Corn as your allies, giving you a huge amount of access without having to sacrifice any of the unique army rules, or the potential to take command traits, relics, or sub-factions. Now, one of the really useful things to bear in mind is that this is useful because a lot of the specialization comes from the god factions themselves. As I said earlier, armies like Korn are mostly known for being offensive combat armies, and Zinch is known mostly for being psychic based, uh, spells based and heavily involved with wizards. Each of the gods are known for being very specific in terms of their game style, and even though there is a fair bit of variety within that, so even the Magakin of Nurgle have demonic cavalry, which is quite interesting in and of itself, and the Zinch units have their own units of horde-based infantry which are good in combat. The thing to bear in mind with all of them is that where there are shortcomings, you can almost certainly bolster it by taking it from somewhere else within the Grand Alliance. And I would recommend that being a very big thing to take into consideration. Because the Chaos armies themselves have historically largely been heavy infantry or light infantry, but always combat with the potential for spells, but not always in the case of Korn, is there's a lot of things that it feels like they're lacking. But now that the Grand Alliance system has helped correct that, you do have far more opportunities and far more to work with. So this brings me on to my last point on this faction focus of Chaos. 
And that is, if you're going to start a Chaos Army for Age of Sigmar, first of all, it's a great laugh, because the variety of models you have is insane, the aesthetic is stunning, and virtually every army operates and does something different. Even two combat armies for two different gods will have different special rules. They will play quite differently when they're actually in the thick of melee, and you'll see that when you get them on the tabletop. But what I was going to say about that is that you should take uh, things that are across the Grand Alliance. And you should definitely think about building up your coalitions. And the fact that you can build up a coalition around gods or around the actual Grand Alliance itself, rather than just the Grand Alliance, gives it a slight edge over the other Grand Alliances and is something which is really quite fascinating to us as players. So, to recap, Age of Sigmar's Chaos is very different to 40k because it's much broader in gameplay terms and also in lore terms as well. If you're going to start an Age of Sigmar Chaos Army, it's good to start with the undivided units so that you can then move around, and even if you want to go with something like Beastmen, which are quite good for new players, it means that you're starting with something which can then fit itself into the other Chaos unit, the other Chaos God-aligned armies, but you can always come back to the undivided. If you do go down one of the more specific aligned routes, always make sure that you're bringing something with you, even if it's within the specific God Alliance to balance out your army, because it's still very easy to fall into the trap of it's all combat all the time. That's not necessarily the case and you will do better for it. And incidentally, it's very rare to see people expect ranged units or even magic sometimes from Chaos players. I have played games in the past where no one expects there to be archers, but obviously you can have Ungor archers from the Beastman range. There are now Slaneshi archers from the new Heed Knights book, which is very exciting. And of course, there's the artillery from the Skaven side of things, which also helps as well. These are all things to keep, take into consideration and build that grand alliance. After all, if Archaon can do it, why can't you? But I want to leave it to you guys. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that the Grand Alliance of Chaos is actually that much different to the 40k version? Do you think this is helpful, what I've said about trying to do different things and working with different elements within these armies? And do you think there's anything more that needs to be said about the Chaos Grand Alliances, such as to do with the monsters or with the characters? Let me know your thoughts. I look forward to hearing from you. So that's my thought on the Grand Alliance of Chaos. I hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyable. Let me know your thoughts below if you've got anything else you want to say about the Chaos Grand Alliance. If you're Chaos players yourself out there, let me know. But thank you all very much for watching. Like, subscribe, all those good YouTube shilly stuff. I try to post my videos every Wednesday and Friday. Let me know what you think of the website if you could have a look at that. The link is in the description below. Goodbye and have a lovely day.